All right, let's talk about the quick punch feature in Pro Tools. All right, so I'm in my YouTube example session today. It's a little bit chaotic, but bear with me. And we have some videos on this channel where we've talked about recording, where we've talked about comping different takes, playlisting, good ways to do recording. Um, and I don't think we've talked about quick punch yet. So that's what I want to talk about today. So first of all, I want to talk about quick punch because this came up in a conversation with somebody. And so what I'll show you first is the idea of punching in using pre and post roll, just so you have that for context. So in Pro Tools, when we're recording, first of all, let me rename this because that is a good habit. So I don't have a bunch of audio three tracks. Uh, I've basically just taken this SM58 and this is what I have routed into the studio machine here. So I'm just gonna kind of put this here so I can talk into it as I'm going and hopefully it gets some some kind of decent recording, check, check. Okay, so first of all, if we wanna record in Pro Tools, um, there's a few ways we can start recording. You just have to record enable your track. I'm gonna actually make all this stuff inactive. We don't need it. You can start recording by hitting three on your numeric keypad. Sometimes you can hit command space bar if your OS doesn't override it. Sometimes you can hit F12 to start recording if your OS doesn't override it. There's a few ways you can start recording, but it'll start recording wherever your cursor is located. So if I put my cursor over here, and then I start recording, check, check, it'll start recording right there, right? So we also have this feature called pre-roll and post-roll in Pro Tools. So if I do Command-K, you'll notice that these little pre-roll and post-roll, they're not flags, squares, rectangles, little rectangles lit up green. And if I hit Command-K again, they activate and deactivate. You can also click on them individually to just turn one on. And the way this works is you'll notice is as I click around that I have a little orange flag on either side and whichever one is lit up is the one that's lit up orange. So see when I click on post roll, it goes gray when it's deactive. So right now they're both active. I can move them around. I can make them a certain value, right? I can make them, for example, right now this one's at two measures here. So I can type this in and switch it to one measure and it jumps forward. Same thing with post roll, right? I can make this two measures if I want. So if I want to, for example, record just this one measure, but I want to hear the measure beforehand and two measures afterwards, or let's do one measure afterwards, then I can do that with this pre and post roll function. So what I do when I want to record, I have this highlighted. You'll notice this is the record section highlighted. I can just hit three and it'll start playing back at this orange flag. It'll start recording right here and then it'll stop recording and keep going to that other orange flag. So let's watch that. So nothing yet, and then check, 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 check. Ta-da, awesome. And that's it. So that's how pre-roll and post-roll work, but quick punch is a little different. Now the way quick punch works, you'll notice with what I just recorded that I can't stretch this out. So even though it played back from here on and then it played till here, it did not record those chunks. It just recorded this one measure. So with Quick Punch, it actually uses an extra voice in your Pro Tools system. So if you have limited resources, this may be an issue. You may have to think about it if you have a session with a ton of tracks going on, a ton of voices going on. But what it does is it uses an extra voice and it basically records the whole time you're playing back. So for this type of chunk of time that I just did, I would have been able to drag this out all the way to include those two other measures. The other cool thing about Quick Punch is that you can hit play and as long as you have your tracks record enabled that you want to record to you can quickly duck in and out of recording you can do drop-ins and have multiple drop-ins within a single play pass so i'll show you all that here in a second so there are a few ways to turn on quick punch so you can do command shift p and you'll notice when i hit p if you look up here at our record button it says p now in there so command shift p back to normal Command Shift P, we are now in quick punch mode. You can also go to options and select quick punch here. If it's checked off, then it's active. So we are currently in quick punch mode. You'll also notice that these options right here at the top of our options menu, if you right click on your record button for the session, you have those options here as well. So you can go in and out of it this way as well. So now that I'm in quick punch mode, let's take a look at recording. So let me do kind of the same thing I just did to hi help highlight the differences here. So I have a measure highlighted, I have pre-roll and post-roll on, and they're recording the measure before, the measure after. So I'm going to hit three. It's doing the same thing. And now it's going to record. Check, check. Awesome. And then it goes out. 
done, right? So difference here, right, is that with this mode, I can now drag it all the way out to where playback started. It's essentially making another track, whether it's displaying it or not, right? It's recording that track for you, whether it's displaying it or not. So similarly, I can also hit play and I'm listening back, deciding what's going on, checking things out, you know, whatever you do. And then if I hit three to start recording, it'll start recording as soon as I hit it. And it'll do this on any record enabled tracks. If I hit three again, it stops. Hit three again, punches in. It's an easy way to do quick drop-ins for certain chunks of time. So you can use this with or without pre-roll and post-roll. So if I do Command K and turn them off, and you'll notice that these can be made into one big file if I want by just dragging them out. But so let's see, let's say that I have this as like a vocal or something. Let's actually see it bigger. So this is like a vocal or something. And let's say I just want to redo this one phrase. One thing I can do is I can just hit play and we get to that point. And right now it's actually recording for me. So now I hit record, just the one phrase, and then out. And now I have that here. But if I want, I can drag this all the way out to where I started recording, right? So I'm going to do undo, command Z to undo. And it'll record, it recorded all the way to where I had stopped the playback, right? So command Z, same thing. So quick punch takes more resources, but it can be much more forgiving. So if you have someone, for example, who is holding out a note and they hold it out a slightly different length each time, you don't have to know that ahead of time and set it. You can kind of wing it and go with it. And as long as you allow the playback to continue for long enough afterwards, you can always drag it out if they held the note out longer, right? So it's very forgiving does take much more resources. Because essentially what you can do is you can change this drop-in point after the fact, right? So you can you can change it after the fact, even if you had it set differently. Another thing that you can do in this mode is you can set it so that it automatically creates fades and crossfades whenever you do a drop-in like this. So if you go to Setup and then Preferences, go to your Editing tab up at the top here, and you'll notice it says right here, quick punch dash track punch crossfade length. So I have zero milliseconds, so it's not making them right now. But let's say I make it 10 milliseconds here. Oops. Uncheck that. I'm going to hit OK. And now if I start recording and I want to do a few quick punches. So punch in. Awesome. Everything's fine. Punch out. Let's do a couple more. Punching in. Punching out. Punch in and out. And now I hit spacebar, it should automatically make these fades for me at these punch in locations. So let's check. There it is, a little 10 millisecond fade. And you can actually check the length here. Let's go to minutes and seconds. There it is, exactly 10 milliseconds. If I hit tab to go to the next one, there it is. So yeah, it's made them for me. So now it's automatically making them for me whenever I do a drop in. And, you know, if you want to go out of quick punch mode, maybe it's taking too many resources for you or what have you, you can right click, go to normal, you can do command shift P, you can go to the options menu and just jump out of that mode and you're all good. And I think that's it for now. It's a shorty video. I hope you like it. I hope someone finds this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise. We're running a book club on the Patreon. That's been a lot of fun if you want to come join that. Um, it's a small group of us and it's pretty nerdy and fun if you're into it. So check that out if you feel so inclined. The Patreon helps me stay independent and there's a Discord server. There are added resources on my website, stuff like that for Patreon patrons. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. okay.